So do you know how to behave yourself at a party where other people and maybe yourself are going to be having sex? So I have a list of questions here, that question and many other questions that people have been sending in to me. And so I'm going to be uh, going through those questions here on this video, but I'll introduce myself first. This is non-monogamous Mark coming to you from my home in Seattle, Washington, where it's beautiful outside because it's, everything is so white. It's dark out now, but it's in the evening, but it's been snowing and snow is stuck on the roads. And, and uh, I said, yes, it'll be a bit of a problem if people go to work tomorrow, but we're going to enjoy it for the evening, though. But tonight, we're going to make this video and talking to you a little bit about some of the many questions that I have people send me in, uh, send in to me. I'm going, I've got a bunch of them listed out here on a piece of paper. And I'm going to have my partner, Chris, join me here on the couch. So come on, Chris, and, and join us. And we're going to probably not get through all of the questions, but we'll get through some of them uh, and uh, see how far we get here before we uh, get too long in the video. We don't want to get too long. So I think what, the way we'll do this, Chris, is that uh, I'll go ahead and ask you the question, okay. and then you can answer the question, and then I'll also um, ask, answer with, or comment on anything I want. Now, before we get started, though, I want you to understand that these are strictly our opinions, and we don't have you know anywhere near the ex amount of experience or knowledge. Um, that many other people that I would consider to be real experts in the field on this, but you know I've I've read a lot and I, we've been to a, um, you know swingers parties and, mm -hmm. and and functions and events and so uh, in fact uh, that was the very first time we ever met in person. In person, in person. we have been we have been communicating online, and, uh, mm -hmm. and then our first time meeting in person was at a at a party. And we had a good time. We had a party. We had a great time. <laughs> and so, and so, uh, and so, we'll go ahead and get started with these questions. Then, and I encourage the rest of my listeners to go ahead, or the viewers, um, go ahead and, and send your questions in, or make your comments um, in the comment sections on this video. Uh, my YouTube channel is a great place to make those comments, or um, click on the link at, in the bottom in the description of this video and you'll find that that's a way that you can get on my email list and when you get on my email list I send you out a way to email me directly and be in contact with me that's how some people get um, in contact with me and submit questions and so forth so I'm always happy to hear from you and I really appreciate it in fact because that helps me to know what kind of um, feedback and information to give to people watching my videos so with the first question here then Chris is a and these are not in any order. I have them in some categories. The categories I have are general questions um, about what to wear, um, the other person's partner, jealousy, STIs, um, things about hygiene. And so we're not going to get through all of those tonight, but let's start with first just general questions. So in, just ha in general questions, before I get to the specific questions mm -hmm. that have been asked, is there anything that comes to mind that you think that uh, might be good for people to, to know that we can cover and go over just before taking and getting into the questions themselves? Um, not really. Okay, mm -hmm. we'll go right into the questions then. If I have great sex with someone at a party, can I expect to have sex with that person again? Not necessarily, no. And, you know, that's very true. And, and expectations are something that are, are something that really are not something I feel are appropriate in in relationships whether they be very casual or even in a marriage it's uh, it's expectations what an expectation is oftentimes is it's it's a thought that you have about something that then is not conveyed or communicated with to someone else because then it's not just an expectation that has been communicated to someone else and it's something that you've been talking about then that becomes an agreement right. between people. And uh, an expectation is something where it's really just something that you have within yourself. And expectations in, um, in relationships, I think, is something that's safe to mm -hmm. say that is, are better set aside. Mm -hmm. An example of this that I, I learned years ago, going to a marriage counselor. And the marriage counselor brought up about the idea of expectations. And, 
like my wife had the expectation because she had a very 1950s uh, experience growing up with her dad and you know was the man of the house provider of the house and and there were certain expectations that you know he went around there every night uh, checking the locks on the doors making sure the locks were all uh, locked on the doors and uh, and then his mom her mom would would go around at night and she would close all the blinds on the windows and every morning then she would open the blinds up on the windows and so you know there is these expectations about who takes the trash out and uh, and those kinds of expectations become problems for people in a relationship because they don't go communicate they don't get communicated mm -hmm. it's just something internally well this is how it should be with someone mm -hmm. and so as far as then the question is that yeah you've had a great time having sex with someone at a party can you expect to have sex with them again mm -hmm. certainly not without communicating right you can discuss it mm -hmm. and you can both mutually agree that you'd like to have sex again um, but just don't expect it to happen yeah, just don't expect it to happen. Mm -hmm. And so, and you know, we're going to um, hear a reoccurring theme as we go through, I think, some of these questions here. That is to what we talked about before in a video. Talk, talk, talk. <laughs> okay. Um, so, next question. What if, you have unex what if you unexpectedly see someone you know at a party and are uncomfortable with that? Oh, um... You know, you can, if you're uncomfortable with it, you can stay away from where that person is. Mm -hmm. Or if you're really uncomfortable, you can leave. Mm -hmm. You know, I, and I, I suppose that's a way of dealing with it. Um, I kind of prefer to... Talk to them. <laughs> I, yeah. I prefer to think of it as, here's an opportunity for growth. You know, mm -hmm. asking yourself, why is this, why does this make me uncomfortable? I know those people. You know, why does it make me uncomfortable that I see them at a party? That's you know, true. and and so start talking to yourself first, and figure things out for yourself and about yourself. Now there is a, some some parties that you'll go to; they might mention this in their party rules. Other parties won't, but there is, a, I think, a common courtesy that's very important in 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 these situations, and that is that. Now, let's say that that you see someone at a party that you know, and you know, and maybe they don't even see you, so they don't even know that you saw them, or maybe that they did see you, and maybe you talked to them. It doesn't matter. But then, a week later, a month later, two months later, or a year later, you see them at the grocery store, or somewhere else, maybe in church, and you say. Hey, it was really cool seeing you at that party, or just something like that, you know. And and that's totally inappropriate. That's totally wrong, you know. It, particularly if if it's if if it's in a public situation, you're verbalizing that, and they're with someone else. Now, if they're not with anybody else, and you're not with anybody else, there's nobody else around that's going to see or know the two of you, and you bump into each other, you know, outside the store or something. You say, hey, then you carry on a private conversation, and that's perfectly right. fine. But to be able to, to carry on a conversation that can basically out that person, yeah, that's then nice. that's really a, a bad deal. Mm -hmm. There's too many people that have been hurt by those kinds of things, um, and so that's not something that's appropriate. But seeing them at the party, uh, I know, for me, I think that that's an opportunity to first talk to myself as to what's my hang up here, what's bothering me, and then to learn just to be a friendlier, more caring, more loving, more outgoing person, even if I'm in my introverted stages. Yes, I have introversions. Uh, I mean, I'm, I'm very outroverted or, or extroverted in some situations, but then in other situations, I'm the guy that's in the corner, you know, just quiet, hanging out, not saying anything or doing anything. And just depending upon the energy that goes on there at, at the event that I'm at, my particular energy at the time as well. And so I'm not always extroverted like you see my, me on camera. And yeah, I'm, I have a tendency of being more that person that just doesn't want to say anything or doesn't want to do anything. And that's where I challenge myself and I create personal growth for myself. Mm -hmm. Because you're, you're all there at that event and they know what, it, what goes on and all. Just when I have a good time, 
and, and go out and talk to them. Who knows, maybe you'll even enjoy having some sex together. That'd be really a mind blower, you know? But the same question, you know, is like, well, what if I go to a party and my daughter shows up? My mom shows up, my dad shows up, my aunt, my uncle, my sister, my neighbor, you know, my my pastor from church. I've, I've heard, I'm, I've heard, I know of a situation where that happened, you know, and and uh, so all of those scenarios, you know, that what 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 goes on there at that party, use it for you to create that con a connection between, with that person that's maybe a more open and free connection than you had before, but then. What goes on there at the party stays secretive at that party. Okay? Any other comments or anything? Okay. Well, here's a good one. If I meet my boyfriend someplace where we are going to have sex with other people and he then leaves me there with those people, I'm assuming that they're talking about like they both drove their own vehicles, but then he leaves me there with those people. Am I wrong for being upset, expecting that he will leave until he will not leave until we all leave? I think they should have discussed it beforehand mm -hmm. as to whether they were going to stay for the duration together or whether you know one would leave without the other. Um, does he have a right to be set upset? I you know I guess it depends on the circumstance. You know, and, and here's the, the, the word that's in this question is, is, am I wrong for being upset, expecting he will not leave until we all leave? Expectations. Expectations again, you know, there's that word. And, you know, I can understand how a person would feel. That just, that to me, personally, that's not something I would ever consider doing is arranging to meet someone at a party, my, maybe you know a girlfriend of mine or something, meet at a party where we're going to play with someone else, or a hotel, or a house party, where we're going to play with someone else, and then, um, you know, maybe halfway through, because of timelines and what have you, I've got to be somewhere else, and so I just leave? No, I, that's not something that I would ever do, and, and just one of the things that I'm very uh, cognizant and courteous mm -hmm. about. I mean, I had coffee with an old friend the other day. It was just coffee. And we sat down, and uh, he started asking me some questions. We hadn't seen each other in three years. And so, and, and he's, a, he's an ethically and conceptually non-monogamous lifestyle person, as I am I. In fact, he uh, followed me through back in the days when I was in my religious days and going through my transition. And, and that's kind of how we developed our relationship, because he went through all that with me at the same time as well. And, and so we got together for coffee the other day just to get caught up in a coffee shop, you know, and he started asking me questions and I thought, okay, you know, these questions that he's asking me, um, I can get very detailed. And so I just stopped him. I said, hey, I don't know how much time you have here and I want to be really cognizant and aware of that. And so that I know how much detail to give you on these questions. So I asked him, how much time do we have? And uh, so then he told me, and so then I knew that I had time to go into detail about the things that we were talking about. Mm -hmm. And and so then, you know, that's the thing with that I would say with with this kind of a situation is that is that if you're going to be going somewhere, try to in meeting your boyfriend, girlfriend, or partner or some kind, um, you know, try to make sure that you're communicating ahead of time. Right. And if you're not communicating ahead of time, we all make mistakes. And then you just learn from that. Your mistake was, you know, that you had an expectation that that person would. And that person's mistake was maybe that, oh, he's thinking I should have, you know, probably talked about this beforehand. You know, so we all make mistakes. And so I think that the real, the real situation here is to, is to learn a couple things. One is forgiving. Be a very forgiving right. spirit. And two, then, is to learn more about not having expectations and instead talking. And discuss it after the fact as to, you know, That's hey, a good point. why did you leave? Um, I kind of expected you, expectations, to, to be there the whole time. Yeah. And that way you can discuss it and find out, you know, what he would have going on. Maybe he thought he communicated it with you. You know, that's a very that's good happened point. to us before. Yes. We thought we've communicated something. I thought it was real clear. 
and he thought he understood. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and it was a miscommunication. So you really have to, to talk about it afterwards and say, okay, what what can we do better next time? And so you can kind of get a bug in your shorts, so to speak, and get all upset and then just stay in that place of being a little perturbed. Or you can use that for a real learning opportunity. Mm -hmm. And so then you, that's through communication afterwards. Afterwards. Yes. Okay, so then, um, is there a minimum or a maximum amount of time you should spend playing with each partner at a party? Now I'm thinking that what this meant on this question is like, yeah, there's a couple people I'm going to be playing with, and is there a minimum or maximum amount of time that I should be, that I should play with them? Uh, I don't think so. No, I don't think so. <laughs> gonna, yeah, because you you may think I'm going to be oh I'm just going to go away for half an hour. I'm just going to do this. It, you're having a really good time, mm -hmm. and time kind of, you're not watching a clock. Mm -hmm. Time's going to get away from you, and so, you know, there is no, no and, set length of time. You know, oftentimes, people that are, are new coming into an ethically consensual non-monogamous lifestyle, they come from a place where they have lived their lives just strictly pleasing other people, mm -hmm. and suddenly then, they're there in this lifestyle doing something for them mm -hmm. and they forget that and they suddenly they start to shift where instead of just being there for them and for for your enjoyment now you're thinking about all these other people and trying to make sure that you're making everybody else happy when the thing I think is really important here is that you're first making yourself happy right. you know making yourself enjoy yourself feel good and so if if you then run out of time and don't get a chance to play with everybody that you were there to play with, then you know that's, that's okay too because you had a great time. And so that's the point: is that don't you know? Well, you know that person was kind of hoping I'd play with him. Well, don't worry about that. Just worry about yourself and making sure that you are having a really great time. You don't have to worry about everybody else that's there. That's not your responsibility. Your responsibility, we talk about this a lot in, in intentionally creating your sexually liberated, ethically and consistently non-monogamous lifestyle, and that is that you're, 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 you will create the greatest life for other people by creating first the greatest life for yourself. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, that's, that's a principle there that stop worrying about everybody else and just really want to create a, a wonderful time for yourself. No, we'll just keep going and then that, next time. That way we'll get through all the general questions and then okay. uh, next time we'll get through we'll have specific categories we're working on. It. But so, uh, what do you do if you see someone not having fun at a party? Talk to them. Yeah, you know, Talk you can you go up. They may be shy, they may be nervous, they may be a number of things. So New them. people, and that's I, that's the the key again too. Is, is talk, 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 <laughs> you know. And yeah, go and talk to them, and and yeah. just be a friend, you know. And sure, if you end up wanting to have sex with them, go have sex with them I've if they want. I have people come up and talk to me when I, I tend to be a little introverted, more so than Mark. And and I have people come up and talk to me if I'm sitting alone at a party. Mm -hmm. and talk to them. Yeah, and so just make them feel a little more comfortable, and and and. You know, it's all also part of, of, of developing our skills. Mm -hmm. That not only we develop our skills because of wanting to have a good time having sex with people, but they happen to be skills that are useful for us in the rest of our life. And that's because we become more fluid in our ability to communicate, warm up, and open up to people. And so just develop that skill. You know, and and. Try to make a point of, of noticing people that that you can go over and strike up a conversation to with. You know, with with my travel business and with what we're gonna be launching later this year, we call it Travel with Benefits, where it's about the benefits that you get to create on a vacation, where then you go home and those benefits have a lasting impact on your life. And one of the th one of the benefits, we have exercises that we help people to do and and maybe when they're on vacation, and a lot of people do, they need to get outside of themselves and learn how to just have conversation with people, introduce themselves, walk up to someone and say, 
Hi, I'm Mark, and I'm on vacation from Seattle, where it's snowing, you know? I, and, you know, I just, just start having a conversation. And we've learned the ability to do that in this world because we're self-sitting at a computer or we're all watching TV at night. You know, I mean, we don't spend time learning to engage with people. The people we do engage with are maybe on Facebook. You know, how many people these days actually spend time talking on the phone? Not many. Not many. And so we just have lost that ability to, to, to engage ourselves with someone and talk with them. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, being part of this lifestyle is a wonderful way for you to take and start to turn that skill um, development in your life around so that you can become one of those people that's just a lot more fluid in conversation. And those people, have, the people who are fluid like that, um, generally go farther in their careers mm -hmm. and go farther in the things in life that they do. Right. And so, any other comments on that? Okay. Um, so then another question was kind of like this, but a little different. What do you do if you want to play with someone at a party, but they don't seem to be having any fun? Talk to them. <laughs> oh, wow. Go up and talk to them. Imagine that. Is that really as simple as it is? Yeah, simple as it is. You know? Talk to them. You know, and, and I know that now it's different for women and different for guys. Yeah. You know, because the women really do control all the... The, the power in we these have situations, the power. yes, <laughs> and and so you know, as as a guy, then I find that I approach people. I'll go up and I'll say, hey, you know, I I notice it. May, maybe a, a person is just sitting by themselves, or it may even be a couple that I've seen. Right. And many times it's been a, a couple or or two women, for instance, you know. And I just say, hey, I you know, I just kind of notice you've been over here by yourself for a while and. And if you're wanting to just not have anybody, you know, kind of bother you or anything, then I perfectly understand that, and, and I won't won't be sticking around. But on the other hand, I just wanted to come over and see if, if uh, we could sit down and we could talk, or if you would like to have someone to talk to. And I just wanted to come over and introduce myself and say hi. And and but if you're if you're wanting just private space, then I want to respect that as well. And see, so that's part of the conversation and communicating is, is that, okay, just go over there and, and find out what they want. Don't just expect that, oh, that person's not having a good time, and so I'm going to go over there and cheer them up. Right. You know, they may be over there not having a good time because that's what they really wanted. You know, they created that reality. <laughs> no, say, well, we don't, how can someone want not having a good time? We have in our life... This is a common theme with things I, I teach with the ECNM lifestyles, is that, is that we do live the life that we create, even if it's not the life that we want. And so that person is living the life that they created, and it may not be what they wanted, but that's what they're living, and they may just need some time to move out of that, or they're going to go back, you know, it's... It's hard to say, and so for yeah. you here again, don't take everybody else in the world or at, at a party. Don't take it upon yourself to, you know, to serve, necessarily serve them. You're there for you, and you've got to get that through through to yourself. And and it's so contrary to most of what our lives are about, you know. And but you got to be there for you, right. okay? And so then. You know, if you see someone over there, then go over there and, 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 you know, maybe someone that you would like to engage with. And otherwise, if it's not someone you'd like to engage with, just let them be. Exactly. You know? Okay. How important is it, is it to be on time when going to a, a play date or a party? I always think it's important to be on time. <laughs> I'm very timely. Yep, Chris is very timely, and that's something that I like to be very timely. It's something that I, you know, work to do. You're um, better. I'm better. You're and, better. And, you know, and, and, and that's just, that's kind of, people are people. There are people, like both Chris and Kathy, my other partner, it's like, you know, if, if they're expecting, if basically something's going to be um, really going by 7 o'clock, 
you know, they want to make sure that they're there by 6.40 because 20 minutes early because they don't want to be late, you know. <laughs> and uh, where yeah. for me, my comfort level is if somebody's at 7 o'clock, well, I'll be there 2 minutes to 7. And that means that if traffic's bad or whatever, I'm going to be there 20 minutes after 7, you know. <laughs> and people are people. And you just have to have to allow people to be people, yeah. be mm -hmm. themselves. And so as far as like, and then there's a lot of events, you know, like the parties and, and house parties and things that, you know, if it's if it's a one-on-one -on -one where it's like, you're going to be getting together with another couple or a few people, and that's different. But if you go into a party, you know, say, yeah, this party starts at 8 o'clock, then if you don't show up until 9 o'clock, it's no big deal. It is, if you're new, it is better to be on time because a lot of times they have a little social gathering beforehand, um, and it's much easier for some people to meet, mix and mingle during a little social time yeah. before than point. just walking right in and wow it's in full swing. Mm -hmm. Okay and so you know um, the, now the now questions that we got going on here are, are more in depth even than what we've discussed so far and okay. looking at the time I think that we should go ahead and uh, make this a wrap on this video okay. and then we'll make uh, another video next week Sounds and we've good. had a great time so thank you very much uh, but I ask you to go ahead and click on that link in the description to go over to uh, where I'm right now I'm talking about a, a book that I'm writing and a uh, guide and if you get on my email list then then you the first thing you, you'll get is from me is you'll get uh, a way to be able to keep in contact with me you get my, my direct phone number my email address uh, Facebook, YouTube links, you get everything you need to be able to keep in contact with me and I really encourage you because I'm, I think that the people who, who have been sending me these questions, it, they most of them come direct to me um, and so I think that they probably don't want to make public comments, you know, like <laughs> go down to my Facebook group and, and where the, I put the video up in my Facebook and they say, they go and they make, you know, they're, cause they're there right. as themselves and so they, you know, they make a comment like, well, hey, if I want to have sex with somebody at a party, what do I do, you know, I mean, I don't think they want to yeah. necessarily make those kinds of comments. No. So, so go ahead and get on my, my, uh, my, uh, my email list and, uh, and stay in touch with me and uh, thank you very much for your time t today in this video and uh, it's been anything fun. else no, okay it's been fun well thank you